what's going on, Giant Pan Sports. So, I got thinking about what players you know, have one last chance to be well, a long term giant. Not any player on the team, but players with some clout, if you know what I'm saying. Some status. So, I came up with five. So, let's just dive in, and I'll start with an obvious player to me, and that's Lorenzo Carter. Carter's going into his final year of his rookie deal. He hasn't earned a second contract, at least nothing of substance. Now, I want to be fair to Carter. He, he wasn't a first round pick. He has shown flashes. I think he's versatile too. I honestly believe he could play a middle linebacker if it was an emergency. And he's got prototype length and speed to be a really good edge rusher in like just a straight up three or four base defense. Oh, he just needs to put it together. In 35 career games played, he has nine and a half sacks. And it's right around, he's he's done right around four sacks a season. You know, just not quite there. Just not quite good enough. You know, I'd like to see him double up those stats, the numbers, at least get, you know, seven or eight. So from all reports, he was about to blossom last season and then tore his Achilles. It sucked. I hate to have to even think about it. But last year, he played in four games. I believe in the fifth game, he got injured really, really early. So sum it up to four games. And in that time period, in that time period, he only had one sack. So to be fair, even with the hype, and they're saying he looks so much better, and he, you know, he was having similar production. So Carter being a third round pick, there's no fifth year option for him. I just think at this point, even if he has like a dull little slightly below average to average season, he may be sent back, you know, especially with Aziz being drafted here in the second round, well, early second, let's call it. Um, you know, Aziz ain't going nowhere. So whoever plays better between Carter and Ifidi will probably have the best chance to be back next season. That's my prediction. Next player who's on their last chance is Will Hernandez. Now, I'm not going to beat up Will too bad today. Yeah, I've been doing that. Uh, I like his personality. You know, he's a cool guy. And every so often, I enjoy the way he plays on the field legit it's just been inconsistent first off will was an early second round pick borderline first rounder i mean we were all shocked well most of us were shocked that he was there at 34. you know i was screaming at the tv for giants to draft him just like lorenzo we've seen flashes he had a really good stretch the second half of his rookie season you know his run blocking is decent and good at times great at times he's got to fix the pass blocking at least he's always healthy and on the field. I'll give him credit for that. Um, he's only ever missed a couple games last year because he got COVID, which cost him his job. How ironic is that? Uh, you know, Will is going to have to ball this season. They get a decent second contract. It is what it is. If it ain't this season, I don't think he's got a future here. Uh, you know, you can find guards nowadays almost every season in the third, fourth round of the draft that can run block well, really well. It's a good and you know and struggle and pass blocking that's what we've seen so you know if we can find it in the third fourth round why should we pay hernandez seven eight million a year you know, i honestly do even though i bash him i hope it works for him here but i'd be lying if i you know i said on here i expect him to be a better player this season i'm afraid he's the player we've seen the last couple of seasons now this next player my surprise everybody might get me in trouble I think this season, it's another player, Jabril Peppers, you know, last chance. And I think he could play so good, he ain't on the team next season, if that makes sense. Or, Xavier McKinney can break out this year, and it makes no sense to sign Jabril. So, I'm not saying I don't want Jabril around next year. I love his fiery personality, and last season was by far his best season. Just, I'm all fucked up in the head because of that stupid contract, you know. Landon Collins got from Washington. We can't give a strong safety 10% of the cap. I'm terrified he's going to have a monster season and price himself out of here. I think Gentleman drafted McKinney for that exact reason. Um, Jabril and Lorenzo will be the talk of the town after the season. You know, I, I hope he stays, but man. Next guy on the last chance is Sterling Shepard. You know, it's no secret, you know, Shep is had trouble with concussions and a few injuries i think if shep has an, you know another injury plague season it'll be his last uh, he'll be a cap casualty i mean just straight up 
I mean, when you think about it, Slayton's going to be here for at least two more years, uh, barring something horrible. Uh, Golid Age signed a five-year deal. He's going to be here. Kadiris Tony, will, you know, will be here in minimum four years. And Tony's a first-rounder, so you have control of that fifth year, you know, with the option. Um, the writing is kind of on the wall at this time, at this point. You know, the one bit of hope I have for Shep is I think he's in a scheme fit, and I think he'll, you know, he'll produce if he's on the field. The second half of last season, he really was the team's number one wide receiver. He emerged. And outside of touchdowns, it really was Shep's best you know, season of his career, and that's on top of missing some games. So that tells you all you need to know. If Kadarius blows up quick and Darius Slayton progresses you know, and gets better, it might be the end of Shep, no matter what. I mean, i just like to say he's been nothing but a great giant since he was drafted here, and a great teammate. It seems like everybody talks highly of him. He just seems like one of the guys... And he really is a truly talented slot wide receiver. Any team would be lucky to have a player like Shep. Now, for the fifth player, I was really struggling. I thought about Evan Ingram, but I think he's probably gone. I mean, I think, I think that's. I'm not sure what Ingram could do to, you know, warrant a big, you know, second contract here. So I ended up actually going to something you guys probably didn't expect. I feed Odin Igbo who came over from the Vikings on a one-year deal. I think Afidi is going to be a really good player here. I think he's going to give Lorenzo a run for his money. What I like the most is he can play all across the defensive line, inside, outside. I know they're going to, when he come to start, he's going to be lining up outside uh, as an edge rusher. We'll see how that goes. He did have an offseason last year, but 2019... I mean, he had seven sacks and a reserved pass rushing role. So I think his best quality may be his tackling. He's an underrated tackler. I'll say that right now. I know a lot. I've never heard anybody talk about it, but from the tape I watched, I like it. Um, so I dug into it. He had a missed tackle rate of 10% last year. In comparison, Dalvin Thomas had a missed tackle rate of 18%. So he gets his tackles. Nine out of 10 times, he makes it. I like that. I just get the feeling that either I feed he, or Lorenzo is going to pop off this season, you know, and the guy in the bottom of the totem, you know, will probably be gone at the end of the year. Anyways, I've put a lot of thought. I ran them through the roster five, six times. These are like high profile players. These are the guys that come to mind. You made it to the end of the video. Hey, send me a thumbs up in the chat. Let me see you. You, you, you pulled through. You're a warrior. All right. <laughs> Anyways, uh, what do we got here? So, that's my five players that have their last chance here. We got number one, Lorenzo Carter, two, Will Hernandez, three, Jabril Peppers, four, Sterling Shepard, five, Afidi Odenigbo. Thank you, guys. Like, subscribe, send me them comments. Stay safe, y'all.